Hi, I'm Dan Coogan, owner of Safety Restraint Chair. We manufacture and sell restraint chairs to jails and prisons, hospitals, and all kinds of medical facilities and behavioral health centers. We have two models of chairs, a correction chair and a medical chair. And this video will instruct you on the proper restraint technique for handling detainees in both types of chairs. This video is intended to train your personnel on the proper restraint technique so that detainees are secured and also that they have the chance to be medically evaluated so we can get them or you can get them the care that they need if that be the case. We restrain people in nine different points on the restraint chair. Both shoulders, both elbows, both wrists, both ankles, and then a lap belt. The chair is designed to handle people from 80 to 400 pounds, depending upon their build. And the chair is 28 and a half inches wide at the outside of the buckle covers and the wheels. It's designed to fit through a standard commercial 30 inch door. It has a low center of gravity, so the chances of someone tipping over the chair are extremely minimal. It has wheels and brakes, and the brakes allow for the chair to remain in place during the restraint process. To begin the restraint process, make sure the chair is in an open area and you have enough room to move the chair and the detainee around in a safe place. Make sure that all the personal property and jewelry on the person is also removed from their body so that there's no chance that anybody can get hurt with those items during the restraint process. Once the chair is in a safe place, the first step in the restraint process is to set the brakes. Now I'll show you how to set the brakes. First step is to move this red arm on the brake clamp towards the tire. As we start to move that, you'll notice that the head of the piston needs to fit into and is custom made to fit right inside one of the hubs, or excuse me, one of the slots on the wheel hub. Once it's inside, you push the arm all the way over. Repeat the process for the other side. You want to take that red arm, start pushing it, and then align the piston head with the slot in the wheel hub. And go ahead and push the handle the rest of the way over. Now the wheels are locked in place. Now that the chair is in a safe place and the brakes have been set, we'll demonstrate the proper restraint technique on this chair. We'll use our able assistant, Joe. Come on in, Joe. And you'll notice as Joe comes in that he's wearing leg irons and handcuffs in the back, just like most people are wearing them in the correction industry. Now we have a cutout in the chair back that allows him to put his hands through the back of the chair and still remain seated, seated against the chair back. Once he's in the chair, the first or the next step is to put on the lap belt. So you take the lap strap out of his holder, take it across the inside of the chair, across their lap, and then on the end of the strap, you'll notice that there's a loop sewn into the strap. You want to place that loop, put the clevis right through the loop in the strap, take that up and over until it's secured and in place. Go back to the other side and pull the lap strap tight across their stomach. You can take the rest of the strap that remains, put it inside the frame and up and over, and just store that in place right there. The next step is to restrain the ankles. To restrain the ankles, you take the leg iron chain and you place that behind the flange on the chair frame. That'll reduce the chances of them kicking during the ankle restraint process. 
Then pull the strap all the way out and push the ankle and foot all the way back next to the frame, making sure that's tight against the frame. Take the strap around and take the strap itself, put it up inside the clevis on the frame, and then pull the strap tight and make sure that's good and tight. Repeat that process for the other ankle. Take the strap out, push the foot back, get it in place, take the strap around, take an edge of the strap, put it up inside the clevis, and then pull the, the strap tight. And make sure those are very tight. Now the ankles are restrained. The next step in the process is to restrain both arms. The first step is to take the handcuff tether, which on the end of the handcuff tether there's a spring hook. And you place that spring hook in the middle of the chain between the handcuffs. And I'm going to do that now. Now the handcuff is secured to the chair. Next thing we're going to do is remove one arm. So we'll, we will unlock one of the handcuffs, take the arm out, and place it through the arm strap. Now this is the most important step in the restraint process. You want to make sure that the wrist, the palm, and the arm are all flat against the arm rest. Then pull that strap down until it's good and tight. Not too tight where it hurts them. So just make sure that wrist remains flat against the armrest and that strap is good and tight. Then secure the elbow strap. Take the soft restraint strap, pull it across. It's a double latching mechanism with hook and loop strapping. Make sure that's nice and tight. That'll stop that elbow from being able to be raised up and putting pressure against the wrist strap with the possibility of getting one arm loose from that wrist strap. So this will hold that elbow in place. Repeat the process for the other side. Unlock the other handcuff. Take the arm out, place it through the arm wrist strap. Again, making sure the wrist is flat against the armrest. Pull that strap tight. Tight, but not too tight where it hurts them. Repeat the elbow strap. Crossing both latches on the strap, making sure that elbow is tight against the armrest. Now we have both arms restrained against the armrest, properly restrained. Now because you've taken both of the arms out from behind the chair, there may be more space behind his back next to the seat. Excuse me, next to the back. So just to make sure, we want to pull that lap strap tight one more time to take up that slack that may have been in there from him removing his arms. Again, take the slack up on the inside and over the frame. Now, the last step is it will restrain the shoulders. Take both ends of the shoulder straps, place them across their shoulders and down. Give yourself enough slack in the shoulder strap to pull the straps behind the chair. You also want to make sure that the V that's in this shoulder strap is right up against the back of the neck as you place the shoulder straps on the chair frame. So then take the shoulder strap underneath the armpit, above the frame. You'll notice that the strap has knots in place. You want to make sure one of those knots is below the clevis on the back of the frame. Repeat on the other side. Pull the shoulder strap back above the frame and into the clevis. And then go ahead and pull that shoulder strap tight. And the shoulder we press back against the chair back. Now the other benefit of having the V in the shoulder strap 
is that it provides a cushion on certain height people that they cannot hit their head hard against the back of the chair. Or if they were taller and the chair was located near a wall, they couldn't bang their head against the wall and cause themselves injury. So that is the complete restraint process. After they've been in the chair for two hours, we recommend that they be released so they can get the circulation going again. You can see that on our chair, the straps do not cross the chest or the stomach. That way their circulation and breathing are not restricted in any way. And the straps are behind their shoulders and we have a very safe restraint system so the breathing and circulation are kept normal. Now, if you have any questions about the restraint process, you can go to restraintchair.com and send us a contact form or grab our phone number and give us a call. We also offer a certification program for the restraint process. If your facility requires your people to be properly certified in handling this type of equipment. Now the second part of this video will focus on the medical chair and how to use the soft restraint straps that are on there. The medical chair uses six soft restraints and two nylon straps. The nylon straps are used for the lap and the shoulders. The six soft restraints that you see here are used for the wrist the elbows, and the ankles. The restraint process for this medical chair using the soft restraints is the same as the correction, the correction chair. That is, the order of placing the straps on the person is exactly the same. But now I want to show you how to use the soft restraint. When you put the arm on the armrest, again, you want to make sure, and this is the most important part of restraining the arms, that the wrist and the palm is flat against the armrest. Then take the open restraint, cross them over, and make sure that's nice and tight, keeping the wrist in place. Repeat the process for the other side. Cross the straps over, each of the latches come across, and holds that in place. Now the elbow strap will make sure that detainees or patients cannot raise their elbow and get leverage or pressure against the wrist strap, enabling them to get out of the chair or get out of this arm restraint. This elbow strap will keep that arm in place and reduce the pressure on that wrist strap. So that's the first change from the correction chair that we showed you earlier. The last step in addition to what we showed you on the correction chair, is placement of the headrest. This is a memory foam headrest with elastic straps. So you want to place that where it's comfortable for the person and according to the height that they are in the chair. Put that in place and that'll provide them comfort while they're being restrained in the chair and also reduce the chances of any injury due to head banging. So that's the last step in the restraint process for the medical chair. Again, if you have any questions, go to our website, and send us a contact form, or grab our phone number and give us a call. We look forward to supporting your efforts in keeping people safe. Thanks for your time today.